Welcome back to another Pixie Game Maker tutorial. Today we're going to talk about control key management. We're going to talk about the control keys and the system keys. So with that said, let's get started. First off, where do we change our input at? And that's going to be in the settings under control key management. When you open this window up, you're going to have the control keys right here. And then if you scroll down, you're going to have the system keys right here. All right. So first we're going to start with the control keys. Now we have the control key name, and this is a very important, these are all the default ones that come with the editor. And I just want to show you exactly which ones these are. So just remember the control key names, we have a list of these. I'm going to hit OK. We're going to go into objects. I'm going to actually create a new object here. We're going to make it a controllable by input device. And the reason when you make it controllable input device, First off, you get some default actions, and they're usually the walking. You get some default links. For instance, the these are what happens when you walk, and then you get this link, which is not really a good condition, but it says no input. But more importantly, when you go to the moving and jumping tab, you actually get the control key settings. These will be populated. If you create an object without this, say just another object like this, you'll see that there's no key settings. All right, so the player object will auto populate them. If you have a normal object, and you're wondering why inputs not working, it's probably because you didn't, you'll have to go back into this tab and set these up manually. All right, so let's go to this first link here, which is going to be from waiting to walk, and we can see that there are some inputs to trigger this link. We can see that there's a left pressed, right pressed, up pressed and down pressed. And by pressed, it's meaning pressing. The on press is the one where you only press it in this action. So the pressing uh, pressed is actually saying pressing. So we can actually add some more and you can see that we get a control key list and when we drop this down. We get the whole list that is currently in that key management setting. So if we go back there, we can see that this is the list that was popped up. Now this is the default list. And so you can't change these names for the control key. But you can see that they're associated very closely with the Xbox controller, which is controller one, controller two is the PlayStation controller, and then you have some direct input, and then your key and mouse. You also got the Nintendo Switch, but I believe this is not edited until you're actually building for the Switch. And so anyway, if we go back to the A right here, it's purely based off the Xbox controller A, we can see that. And so what's what this is saying is that for this link to trigger, you can press A on an Xbox, you can press X on a PlayStation, you can press button one on whatever that would be, and then you can press A on the keyboard. And then that will trigger this A. You'll notice that Xbox had, or the PlayStation had nothing to do with an A, the keyboard did, but it doesn't have to. For instance, we could double click into this, and we could actually just change the key to be either one of these default ones that they have, or we can just hit keyboard mouse, and we can press say one, for instance, so the, the numerical one, and I can hit okay. And now one would trigger this a control key. So now if I was to go and add that control key, then in the game, if I pressed one, it would also trigger this, this link. And so you can kind of see now how you can expand this. Basically, the, the biggest one, one of the bigger ones is I want my left stick to also work with movement. And so we can see that the default ones are the up left, or sorry, up down left right. And then we can see that on the Xbox and the PlayStation, they're all they're both the same. And these are representing the D pad. All right. So it's not representing the left stick, which is shown right here. And some people will try to do use the left stick instead of these and it, it creates the same problem. So the easiest solution for this is to just leave the arrows as the default movement. And by that, I mean, in, in here, just leave them as the arrows, but go to the control keys and start to add our own. And so this is where we can pick an existing key. And this is what we want to do in this case, because we want up to represent two different things. We want it to represent the up on the D pad, but we also want it to represent the left stick up on an Xbox. And then you would do the same for the, the PlayStation. I'm just going to do Xbox just to keep this tutorial simple. So 
Now this up is going to be the D-pad or the left stick or the arrow key. And then say we want wads as well. Then we can come to the keyboard and we can say we want up to also be if W is pressed. Now we would have to be very careful because we have W right here and we have W right here. So if we have a link condition where if Y is pressed, when you press W to move up, it's technically going to trigger this Y as well. Now this might not do anything because you might not have a Y condition, but if you did, you would have to clear this out and you can literally just say not set and click okay and basically not have that be a condition. You'd wanna change it to something if you want a keyboard to be able to, to access that trigger. So let's just say we did, uh, I don't know, two. Okay. And so we can kind of see the gist of this right here. We can add another one and we can say down and we want down to also be left stick down. And then on the keyboard, we want it to be S or yep, it's S. So now with our setup here, we can control with just these keys because the, the fact that I added more of those keys means that these are ands basically, or, or ors or whatever, however you want to look at it. But this key is the exact same as this key. So this means that the D pad or the left stick can trigger it, the arrow key or the W. So I hope that makes sense. This is basically how you go on and on and, and keep adding things. You can either add new ones. Like for instance, let's say that you don't want your game to have this style of control key names. Let's just say you want to say, you know what? I just want this to be the jump key. You can name it jump and then you can go on to define what you want that jump key. Then you can hit okay. And then instead of trying to remember what ability was what, you could press that you want the jump key to be pressed. And now you know that if jump is pressed, you that's what will trigger the condition. So there is some options when you go about this. I think a lot of game developers tend to use the jump, the attack, and stuff like that instead of specific inputs that are different on each controller. But that's up to you. The only problem with this is that you have to create a new one basically. And sometimes it's just easier to just use the default ones. So I, I completely understand. But yeah, this is how you would go about adding new ones as well as adding two existing ones, different inputs. All right, so next let's go down to the system keys. Now this was introduced, I think in 1.0.5. And so it basically gives us some options for the system keys and by default the ones that we have are the switch screen now the switch screen is talking about going from full screen to windowed mode okay and by default that is escape then we have and you'll notice that we have one two three and four of these switch screens okay so just keep that in mind for now but we'll go to the next one which is display the menu now the menu is that f1 d debug basically the f1 right here but it's not just the F1 debug for when you're play testing, this right here. It's also for when you actually make a game. The players will have access to the PGM F1 debug. That is game specific. It's not the same debug that you have in here. So if we go back there and you'll see that there's a one, two, three, four of that one as well. And then the last one that we have is the reset. And so by default, that was when you held start or select on a Xbox, option share on a PlayStation, and then F5 on a keyboard. So before I get into what these one, two, three, and fours are, I'll just say that, let's say that you don't want them to have an option to go from full screen to windowed. Well, then you can simply just select not set on the switch screens on all of them, make sure all of them are not set. And then the player will not have access to full screen or window switching. And, and the same with the dis display menu and with the reset. If, you, if I remove the F1 debug right here, now I don't even think I could access it in the debug. Nope, I can't even do it while play testing. All right, so now let's get into what the one, two, three, four options are. Basically, these are what key combos need to be pressed to trigger it. And you can see that there's only one option it's on the one here 
for the keyboard. And that's why F5 will reset your game from a keyboard. But you can see that on a Xbox controller, the start and the select have to be pressed in order to reset the game. And that's why on the controller, you can't just press start and it resets, or you can't press select and it resets. You have to press them both and then they trigger the reset. So this one, two, three, four is what button combos do you have to press in order to trigger the reset? And it's the same thing for this. In order to trigger the full screen, what combos do you need? That's what these uh, system keys are for. And so hopefully this made a lot more sense about the control key management. It's a very important part of the game and it's actually very simple. Any questions, drop them in the comments below. Uh, Steam form, Discord, we'll get you figured out. With that said, we'll see you at the next video. Thank you.